Hello friends. It has been raining most days for the past weeks, months, I'm not sure. The days all tend to blend together for me when the weather is dreary. This is the first nice day in a long time, so I wanted to be outside. And it looks like some of the plants have started blooming already. I'm looking for a subject to paint. I've had a hard time with flowers because I haven't quite figured out how to capture the lightness and transparency of the petals. These pink ones are cute though. I've been painting local landscapes and flowers as a way to try to connect to this place and the people that live here. I grew up on the east coast and although I've lived in California for a year now, it still seems distant and strange. Maybe if I observed the landscape closely enough, I could fall in love with it. I like these magnolias and how the light is hitting them. White flowers can be really fun to paint because you can bounce a lot of other colors off of them. I brought a few brushes, but let's be real, I'm going to use the same filbert I always use. I have my acrylics, a primed wooden panel, and pickle scented water. It's a good thing I took some reference photos because the sun moved so quickly that I didn't even have time to get an underpainting complete. I'm skipping through a lot of this process because the beginning stages are very simple shapes, but you can watch the sun pass over my page and change everything within minutes, making me repaint parts of it. I don't know why I thought this wouldn't be a problem like it was with the flower. The light bounces off the ground and lights up the interior in a really pretty glowy way, but of course that's not what it looked like when I started, so here I am struggling. I would have liked to get further with this sketch painting, but I got far enough to capture the moment, and I like its current state. This is as far as I got with the magnolia before I realized I couldn't continue with how the light kept changing. Stay with me, I think this one turns out really nice. Burnt umber has been my secret weapon of painting realistically. Even a tiny bit of it mixed into another color will desaturate that color but maintain its warmth. I wanted a dark background and I knew I was going to reflect subtle blues and purples in the white flower, so I mixed blues and purples into the burnt umber for the background. The white flower will pop really nicely against this. I'm referencing the photo I took earlier so I have to adjust the lights and shadows in my painting. For now, I'm mixing mostly opaque colors to block in the shapes I see. Later, I'll use glazing techniques to soften edges and warm up the light. I wanted to include a very angled shot to show you how thin my paint is. I like having just enough to lay a color down, but you can still see the texture of the wood surface. The same is true for my gesso, I prime the wood with several thin coats to preserve the texture. This is really one of my favorite parts about this process. 
Glazing is where the magic happens. With transparent paint, you can layer a faint color that will harmonize your painting. Here I am using mostly matte medium with a tiny amount of burnt umber mixed in, and using the same small filbert brush to thinly layer. All those blues and yellows will still peek through in the final, but they'll be a bit more subtle. And you'll see me layering in some of that pale blue uh, back into the painting later too. Painting in glazes allows me to barely touch the surface, changing the painting without being present, like a delicate ghost. Only the effect is visible. Even without seeing the individual brushstrokes in the final, the entire painting is still my fingerprint. Glazing really allows me to layer complex colors in a way that I personally can't achieve if I had mixed them on my palette. I think it's more interesting to have those soft layers of colors. They create a more complicated kind of depth illusion. It's a very meticulous process, and I find it incredibly rewarding. A few days later, it's time for varnish. Whenever possible, I leave my painting alone for a few days to give my eyes a break. When I go back to it, it will be easier to spot any areas I want to adjust before I varnish. I'm using Liquitex gloss varnish, working quickly and trying not to go over the same area too many times because that will make bubbles and textures in the varnish and I want it to be super smooth. The gloss will reflect like a mirror, so any bumps and bubbles will be obvious. Gloss varnish enhances the colors and makes a nice uniform surface, in addition to protecting the painting from UV light fading the colors over time. I wait 4 hours for it to dry completely, then do another layer. I'll usually do 3 layers, sometimes 4, it just depends on how smoothly I was able to apply it. In the past, my flower paintings have felt very heavy and too technically focused to feel alive. I think this one comes close. I'm really happy with how this came out. The glazing makes it look different in changing light. I wish you could see it in person. The thin layers of color are flattened when they're viewed through a lens. Please let me know if you enjoyed this video and if you are interested in more glazing techniques and painting process videos. And especially let me know if there are any plants that have a special meaning to you. A favorite flower that reminds you of someone important, or maybe a tree that has become a sign of coming home. Thank you so much for watching today. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week.